Well, Gift of the Givers is one of the organizations helping on the ground. Uh, let's speak now to the founder, Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman. Doctor, thank you for being with us as always. Uh, when you look at the death toll and look at this figure, 87 people still missing. So, so the death toll could go up considerably already at 461. I guess it reminds us just of the, the scale of this tragedy, how deadly these floods were. Do, do you get a sense of that even now on the ground in KwaZulu? Uh, good evening, Francis. Yes, the death toll is probably far higher than that. When the figures were on 337, we had already set up a missing persons line. And at that point, within hours, there were another 237 people missing when the death toll is around 333, 50. So the figures are now sort of balancing out from what the Premier is saying and what we had found on the ground. And to answer your question, and of course, that was from what people had told us directly. But a lot of people probably could not communicate with us because many families were washed away. When our teams went around to the different areas, they were told the water came like a very angry sea. It washed people away. We had neighbors, all of them had disappeared. So lots of people disappeared quickly and there may be no account of those people. If you just by analogy, if you think that the water and, and, and sort of reflect that the water could take shipping containers and float them and throw them against a bridge. What did it do to informal settlements? How's it that a belt of cardboard, corrugated sheet, and plastics? So many people must have been washed away. So the death toll is still probably much higher than that figure, and we will, we will never know. To answer the second part of your question, what each day, as you go around Pazulu Natal, you realize the extent of the damage. You know, when the water is down and floods are gone, you can see the amount of infrastructure damage in the various areas. And the, and the nature and the extent of the infrastructure damage in the roads, in the houses, in the schools, in the health facilities, the water plants, it's huge. The destruction has been probably, the, it, is, it is the biggest natural disaster we've had in our history. Sure, it's, it's just completely unbelievably awful when you talk about whole families being washed away but but to return that eight to that 87 people uh, still missing have you met any families who are missing a loved one i mean what do you do now we're two months down the line when do you give up are, are there any searches or has that that been stopped and then i guess you just hope bodies turn up how, how does it work well, you, at some point, you take a decision that search and it's not rescue, it's recovery. There's no, it, there's no point because, you know, the water has washed them away either to the sea or they're deeply buried in ground and, you know, they're completely decomposed. We still get messages. People saying we have four people that are missing, my child is missing, they give you areas. But those areas have been searched before. Teams have gone there before, but people are always looking, you know, it's, it's a natural human instinct. You want closure. You want to find the body of your child or your husband or your father or your brother. And unfortunately, in most cases, so late in the day, you're not going to find them. Yes, to answer your other question, some bodies do come out, have still been coming out. You know, it's been a lucky for those families, lucky on the one side that the body is found. Secondly, it, on the other point, it's very sad that the person is deceased, but that's the reality. After the second week, we tell people it's very unlikely you will find anybody alive unless they caught up somewhere else, they're not in the water, they're stuck somewhere, they're, they're, and, and, you know, and they, they didn't have a, a cell phone or communication. And that did happen, where somebody called us a week later and said, we found the family member, they had no phone, they, 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 was, they were stranded anywhere, and they got hold of us. And of course, we've asked them to check all the mortuaries, check the hospitals, and as, as has been mentioned in your report, there are people that have not been identified yet. The possibility is that those people who are not identified, maybe their family members have also passed on. Sure. Give us a sense of the scale of need. You spoke about the huge infrastructural damage that is going to take a long time to repair. But give us a sense of the scale of need in terms of people who don't have water, uh, some who don't have homes, who are still in those community centers, who are still relying on food aid. Well, food aid is still going on, but not to such a big extent anymore. You know, a lot of people have moved from the centers to their families or their neighbors. But there's still about 40,000 people who need homes. The big problem is there hasn't been an, an, uh, uh, an intervention in terms of infrastructure. Yes, the sides of the roads have been cleaned. Yes, they're moving the rubble out of the way. Yes, the landslides are being sorted out. Some of the roads are being sorted out. Some of the water areas are being sorted out. 
but there's far more needs to be done. In terms of the big roads, there's huge, I mean, if you drive anywhere, they tell you the roads are closed. Along the M4, the bridges are destroyed. And in the second flood that came, or the second rain that came after the first flood, like on the M4 near La Mercy, more, more parts of the bridge were destroyed. So and the roads have to be repaired in many parts of the province. That's the first thing. Second thing is houses have to be put up for 40,000 people. Their homes, nobody has made any effort to start any homes right now. Schools, the school damage, close to 600 schools have been affected. And very minimal work has been done on that. And health facilities, we're looking at 180 million rand worth of damaged health facilities. That hasn't started. The water situation in Tonga is now made probably 60 days plus. Where, when, when I say people don't have water, it's water not coming out of the taps. Yes, we've put in 15 bowls. Our water tankers are coming. What bottle water has been coming. But it's not the conventional way in which you get water from the tap. And many other areas, the water fluctuates. It comes, goes, it comes, goes for weeks on end. And then we are now drilling bowls in areas that were affected with water even before the first flood came. So there are areas in case they end that are water deprived, not related to the floods. There's just no water. Yeah, so the, sure. the demand for water is in many more areas. And, you know, we're building those areas. We're building houses. We're repairing schools. We've given 15 million rand worth of contracts already. Repair the first nine schools. And even in the school itself, we're doing a process what is called jetting. Jetting is to remove sand and, 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 and sludge inside the stormwater drains, which haven't been maintained for years. And one of the reasons where the schools got very badly flooded is because of the stormwater drains. And we're busy cleaning those things up also at the moment. Doctor, finally and quickly, please, what you're saying is very concerning. We need a great rebuild here. We, we knew that there were low-lying bridges. They not only have to be built, but they have to be built safer. Uh, that actually put people in danger. So a huge uh, talk. Well, there's a lot of talk about the infrastructural rebuild. Uh, the Premier was talking about donations. Are you engaging with the provincial government at all? I know it's beyond your purview, but do you ask questions? Why are these roads and schools and all these things that you've mentioned not being rebuilt as quickly as possible? I don't need to ask them. That. I know the answer. There's What's no money the for that. <laughs> there's no money for that. You know, they wait, they, they, there's a discussion going on. The one side, they say, the, the Treasury says, you've got to apply for the money. The provincial governments and the, and the study council said they applied for the, for, for the, for the money. From the, from the Treasury, you, you get the feedback from the Deputy Mayor that no, it's told that they never applied for the money. So it's just ping pong is going on between different tiers of government. And that's one of the major problems with South Africa. It the, the disasters, it, it's a disaster in terms of its disaster management. There's too many structures involved. There's no one clear coordinated system where you, have one, you press one person press the button and everybody down the line follows the system. We don't have that kind of coordinated system. And that's why there's so many different divisions involved and the funds are not coming. The reality is, it's simple. You need to build bridges, you need to build roads. Now, yesterday I heard something very disturbing. I, I was told that, yes, a contract was given for the roads and the bridges on the M4, and th there were several several bidders, and after one of the bidders got it, and the other one took the, the, the one that got it to court. So that process is delayed again. We keep having this kind of issues that delays infrastructure, but they, that money is never going to be enough to fix everything else. When are they going to start building the houses? When are they going to start repairing the schools? There are whole schools that is very dangerous for kids to go to. There's no water in areas. There's no sanitation. It becomes a hygiene issue. The classes are dangerous. The rooms are dangerous. And, then, and some schools we saw are totally destroyed, which has to be refurbished in huge quantities. We're talking about 3 million, 6 million, 8 million. Of course, there's other ones we're fortunate, 30,000, 50,000, 80,000. But all this requires a lot of money. And that's besides the 180 million required to fix the hospital facilities. Gift of the Givers founder, uh, Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman, looking at the sad state of affairs. This is two months after that devastating, fatal flooding in KwaZulu-Natal.